believe me, you are gonna thank me later for convincing you right now to get a proper camera for your next safari. Ooh. What's up Safari Nation, Safari Beyond here and welcome back to another video. What do you guys think of my YouTube studio? Pretty, pretty dope, right? Anyways, COVID-19 has put a pretty big damp on most people's travel plans for the last couple of years. And even though traveling is still a little tough, people are starting to travel more and more. And I've noticed that a lot of people are aiming to get to Africa for a proper African safari. So here's Safari Vian's essential never to forget items, Safari packing list for 2022. We all know how to pack shirts, pants, socks and underwear. So this video won't be about packing clothes that you would take to your grand's house for the weekend. Instead, I put a list of items together that I believe is essential in improving your Safari experience so that you can get the most out of it. Binoculars. Before you pack absolutely anything into your suitcase, make sure you have a nice pair of binoculars, snug and safe, packed into one corner. You'd be surprised how many people I get on safari that don't bring their own pair of binoculars. And before you ask, yes, it really does make a difference. Imagine you get to see your first leopard ever on safari, perched lazily in a beautiful tree, but at a slight distance though. If you have your own pair of binoculars, you can stare at it at much as you want for as long as you want but if you had to pass a pair around sharing with other people it would kind of dampen your experience wouldn't it camera now before you say that you'll just use your fancy iphone 13 to snap some shots of what you see just hear me out often on safari you'll encounter animals pretty far away and even if they are slightly closer zooming in on your phone seriously deteriorates the quality of the photo just just believe me, it does. And if you want those perfect Instagram shots, you're gonna need a camera with a decent focal length that can take some really good quality snaps. Now you'll be looking for something at least around the 300 millimeter lens range. And I've got a bunch of videos on camera suggestions and that kind of thing if you wanna look at that. But you can buy a very good entry level Canon or Nikon setup for a very good price, or you can even go towards the bridge cameras setup. And if you're scared about your budget, then you can even consider buying second-hand cameras. But believe me, you are gonna thank me later for convincing you right now to get a proper camera for your next safari. Plus a bonus tip, make sure you get three or four memory cards that you can take with on your safari. You often end up taking way more photos than you'd think. And I suggest the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 or 128 gigabyte memory cards. Very good, very fast, and your photos will be safe. Now, I would say leave your cell phone at home, but let's be honest, that's not gonna happen. We use these amazing devices every single day to stay in touch with family, to snap that awesome selfie with a lion in the background, or, okay, not everybody does that every day, but you get what I mean. And you also keep track of all your apps and everything that you need on this device. So you are definitely not gonna leave it at home. That is why I suggest a good power bank. Camps sometimes experience power failures due to weather and various other reasons, so it's just good to have a good backup charge. There's nothing worse than running out of juice on a game drive vehicle when you want to snap a photo of a leopard that's right next to the vehicle or that selfie with the elephant in the background. So it is still good to have your phone on you. For your guide's sake, keep it on silent though. So make sure you get a power bank that can last at least a couple of charges. My suggestion is this Anchor Power Pro, which is a very good power bank. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank and I can charge my iPhone 13 mini about six or seven times with this. Good power bank, good tool to have. Wide brim hat. Wide brim hats just offer full all round maximum protection from the sun. And I really enjoy a good baseball cap. It's nice and snug and slim line, but after burning my ears to a crisp a good couple of times, I've seen the value in a good wide brim hat. Make sure your hat sits nice and snug on your head or that it has one of these chin straps so that it doesn't blow off on the back of a Gambia when you're racing to a leopard sighting per se. Not that people race on safari. Okay, sometimes people race on safari. I have a full leather wide brim hat because I like the feel, it's nice and snug and it only builds character over time. But you do get very nice comfy canvas or more lightweight options as well. Polarized sunglasses. Squinting creates wrinkles and on safari you squint a lot. 
trust me. And depending on where you go on Safari, you might end up on a game viewer that has no canvas canopy. So having a good pair of sunglasses mixed with your wide brim hat just ensures that you are ready to face the daily glare and heat that Africa throws at you. And believe me, it happens pretty much every day. It's very important protecting your eyes. So don't squint on, <laughs> see what I, no. That's okay. Don't squint on the price, but just make sure you get a good quality pair of sunglasses and make sure they are polarized, just to get that maximum protection, you know. Hydro flask. Water is life. And believe me on Safari, it is absolutely no different. You're gonna spend every day, at least twice a day, three to four hours doing some or other Safari activity. A Safari walk, a game drive, whatever it may be. And you are going to want water especially on a very hot summer's day now nobody likes hot water and that's where this puppy comes in hydro flasks are double wall steel slash metal whatever this is flasks or bottles and what that basically just means is that it keeps your water a lot colder for longer and if you add a couple of blocks of ice in there you'll have cold water for the entire day now that's the safari vian seal of approval <laughs> buff most outdoor enthusi enthusiasts know what a buff is. It's that round bandana thing that the teams on Survivor get to wear. What I like about them is the fact that they are super versatile. It can be used to protect your neck from some serious sunburn. You could use it over your mouth and your nose to keep the African crusty dust out of your system. And if you really want to, you could maybe even wet it with your hydro flask, remember which is icy cold, and put it on your head to keep yourself cool when it's very hot in the day. Now oh, there's water everywhere. You, you can use it as a cloth to wipe the table if need be. <laughs> ah, so nice and cool. And now I look like a pretty cool adventurer. Yeah, <laughs> let's go take on the bush. <laughs> I should I should not be in the bush alone this often for this long. Yeah, it gets weird. Headlamp. Believe me, you don't want your safari cut short because you reached into your bag at the middle of the night and suddenly got bit by a venomous snake. Seeing what you're doing, especially at night, is essential when you are on safari. Chances are you won't generally come across anything dangerous or venomous, but you rather want to be safe than sorry. A headlamp just lights up the path ahead of you. It frees up your hands to do what you need to. So no more using your iPhone's light function so that you can tie your shoelace early in the morning in the dark with one hand and your teeth and people there are easier ways. It's called a headlamp. Just get one. There are many different types, different brands, different strengths of light whatever you want to look into you can look at all the gizmos the gadgets and the details but you'll find one that suits your budget just make sure that you do get one of these though leather journal whether you are someone that journals or not i suggest taking a journal on your next safari experience imagine you are 94 years old you're mad old that's old and you want to tell your great grandchildren about your amazing safari experience or adventure that you so bravely pursued. How cool would it be if you could actually tell them the exact details of what you saw? Obviously adding a little bit of spice to keep it interesting. But by journaling what you see on your safari, you get to remember these memories for a much longer time and the details won't get fuzzy and if they do, you have something to refer back to. Now I say a leather journal because it makes you feel a bit more like an explorer and that means you'll be more motivated to write in your journal on your safari trip. Personally I'm not a big fan of journaling but this leather journal makes it pretty cool so I actually do it a lot more. I just like anything leather. Over time it just builds character and it gets it's ages it's like wine it just gets better and it looks cooler so leather journal get one and then lastly a comfortable backpack 
you know, so that you can keep all of your amazing essentials in one place. Make sure you buy a backpack that's comfortable, that's easy to carry, and that's got a lot of side pockets and stuff for you to put little extra things into, you know, maybe like an extra snack or whatever for the road. And make sure you buy a backpack that either has a rain cover or that comes with a rain cover separate, or maybe just buy a rain cover separate. But when you're out on safari, often, a thunderstorm will just hit you out of nowhere and you want to be able to keep your bins and your camera and your power bank and your phone and just everything dry that needs to stay dry. Oh and a bit of a bonus tip, make sure that you pack a country specific power adapter. There's nothing worse than arriving at your camp on safari and you can't charge all your electronics. Now usually most safari camps have a few of these handy so if you don't have one it's not the end of the world but it's just easier bringing your own and then you definitely know you can charge your stuff i'll put a list with all of this stuff in the description below and add some links and do all of that youtube stuff you know but i hope that this gave you some insight on what i believe is very important to improve your safari experience and yeah chat to me in the comment section below let me know if you want to add anything or take anything away what you agree or don't agree with I'm all for anybody's opinion, really. But hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Smash the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. And yeah, just have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. This is my... Peace.